short book club. Um, I know for some of you, this is your first time with us, so make yourself comfortable and um, we'll get started. Uh, we're really excited to welcome a couple new members and because of that, I will be um, explaining how things work a little bit today. Okay, so if you'll bear with me. Um, this is, as most of you know, our selection meeting. How it works is that um, each month one of us uh, nominates a series of books and then we all vote and choose one to read. And of course this month I'll, fo um, I'll function as the, uh, the lead for, uh, for this a particular story as we read it. And then next month that duty gets passed to another one of us and we take turns like that. So um, I have um, a list with some notes um, about which books we'll be looking at today. I apologize for my shakiness. It's just natural with me. Um, so I will be reading you some notes uh, that I've made about the selections I'll be showing you and then um, we can go ahead and pass those around um, so I will then give you all a chance to kind of look at each book um, and decide if it's one that you'd really like to read this month or if you'd pass on for now. Um, and so I'll show you and tell you a little bit about every one of our books this month, okay? And then finally, um, we will give uh, you all a chance to vote. And um, we'll put your votes inside this candy box. So it's, um, it's anonymous. <laughs> you know, things can get sort of dramatic at book clubs, so... We keep everything anonymous and you'll put your vote um, into here and uh, and then I will read each one of your votes and we will decide on which book, okay? So uh, I think if there aren't any questions, I will get started with my book talk. Oh, and just to let you know, for the newcomers once more uh, and to remind um, all of our uh, regular members. Um, last month we did um, vote on which uh, which characteristics we wanted the books to have. Uh, every month we decide on a couple traits that we would really love um, in our suggestions for the next month. So um, the two things that we had specified before were uh, you were all interested in some um, some strong female characters, some really interesting female characters. So I will deliver that. And then um, the other thing was uh, you all had wanted something that maybe had a bit of a twist to it uh, or something rather unexpected. So uh, our, our selections today have both the strong female characters not all of them are heroic. Some of them are actually rather, um, rather treacherous, <laughs> but they're fun and they're well written and they're strong. And then um, we have, of course, some very twisty, turny kind of stories. So lots of twists and turns in these. Uh, so I'm excited and uh, I guess we'll go ahead and take a closer look at each one of these books if you're all ready. Okay, let's get started. So the first book we're going to look at is called Look at Me. And Look at Me is a novel by Jennifer Egan. This particular novel was um, a finalist for the National Book Award. So, if you tend to like 
National Book Award nominees. Um, this one is a good representative. It's, um, it's topical in its way, um, though very specific to the time it was written, so it's somewhat political, um, but not overwhelmingly so. And I will, I will read from my little notes about this one. Let's see. My notes are very uh, messy, but let's see. Oh, look at me here. Okay. So, I wrote that. Look at me is a unique story that was written at and about the post-tech pre-9-11 period where image became bolted to our beings like shadows. It scans near and far in the breakneck tradition of Andy Warhol or David Lynch. So, that was my very quick um, plug. Um, so, this is a, a great one. It's quite strange. And maybe, um, in terms of content, a little bit heavier. Um, it also has moments that delve into um, the very exciting and kind of uh, page-turner territory. And then at times it slows down a little um, to look at uh, the history of American industry. Um, and um, the differences, I suppose, um, in, um, in, in industry and how it grew within large cities and urban settings and how it changed the landscapes of smaller towns, things like that. Um, but it also deals with areas of um, fashion, um, technology, and of course, mostly image. It's very um, rooted in the struggles that we have with image, how it shapes us, how we shape it. So, so it's a really lovely one, and I think a lot of you might like it. Um, it has a very strange way of jumping from perspective, uh, and we certainly see many narrators who are maybe not as reliable as they could be, which is super fun. So we get very, very, very close to the interior of these characters and their philosophies. So this one could be a good choice. Next, I have a classic for you, and it's it's relatively short, more of a more of a novella. It's Daisy Miller by Henry James, and this is the Penguin Classics edition. So let's see what I wrote about in my little notes for Daisy Miller here. Um, oh, here we are. All right. So I said, Daisy Miller feels playful and jaunty, but ultimately plays with and on your expectations of stuffy social novellas. So it does sort of look like <laughs> it will be a um, a very tepid uh, social um, and um, very well mannered little novella, but truly, I think the great twist with this one, because we're talking about strong female characters, um, and great twists in literature this month 
Um, I think that this is, is such a great one because it really challenges, again, um, like the last book, like Look at Me, it's very much about image and very much about female image um, and how it relates to masculinity uh, in a much more proper time. Um, but it's also very much about the American image versus the European constructs of, of what a woman should be, ought to be. Um, but at times, it's very, um, it can be a very cruel and unfair little novella. And so I think even if you don't typically like period work, you could quite enjoy this one. Let's see. And again, you can see it's not... It's not very, very big. It's a quick, it's a quick read. Um, and let's see if there's anything of note. Um, oh, a small masterpiece. It is, it's, it's small in scale maybe. Um, but I think that Henry James, if, if you've read him before, you'll have faith that, um, that he can really, he can surprise you, and he can create almost a sense of eeriness and wariness where you at least expect it. So, I quite like this one. And if we're sort of in the mood for something um, a little bit shorter, um, but maybe a little bit denser, um, this could be a great choice. So, and I actually really love the cover art on this one. It's so lovely. Let's see, um, I'm trying to show them to you on this nice blanket. <laughs> Although I think it might have a little bit of cat hair on it, so I'm sorry about that. Um, the next one is quite different and very new. This is um, the most recent by far. I'm going to make sure I can get it all in view for you. It's called Eileen. You can see that, Eileen. And this one came out just this year, so um, do note that if we choose this one, we'll have to go with the hardcover, as I don't think the soft cover is available yet. Actually, maybe it came out last year. I guess we're at the very beginning of a new year, and I get confused. <laughs> um, you can see this relatively sparse cover and you just see this car and clearly it's it's snowing and what i love about this cover is that it feels somewhat displaced and out of context it maybe feels a little overly minimal or generic but as you begin to read the story and learn its symbols and its own language this becomes so captivating, and it's the same way with the main character, Eileen. Um, she's just somebody who you, you look closer and closer and closer at. And she's fascinating. Um, and you'll look again and again and again at this character, I promise. It's so interesting. And I just love, I love the feeling of a nice new cover sometimes. A nice, clean, matte jacket for this book. So, um, let me look up my little notes here for it. Um, I guess we're on the other side. Ah, oh, Eileen. Okay, so what I said about Eileen, I said... This story is peculiar and maybe grotesque, but I read it in one curiously compelling session. The scale is small, small town, but the stakes are high as we come to know Eileen on a freakishly intimate level and fall in with her loves, hates, and compulsions. So... You can see my notes are always such a mess. I have very messy handwriting. 
um, and I always just kind of tear things about like this, but, um, I will warn you that if we do choose Eileen, um, as with all of our books, just for those of you who are maybe new to our club, um, no, we do have, um, you know, this is an adult reading club, and so, um, some of these have issues of, you know, violence or substance abuse and adult relationships and things like that. So, um, this book is definitely, I would say, more of an, a PG-13 or a rated R book. Um, it's not, it's not necessarily super lurid all the way through, but it is a little bit disturbing maybe to some people because it's so strange, <laughs> so, um, and I would say that of Look At Me as well, Look At Me definitely has, um, maybe some more, um, mature content, so, but neither one of them are, are over the top in my opinion, but just so you know, it's maybe not, um, maybe not like a feel-good story, but, but it's just a fascinating, gorgeously written, one. Um, I'm even not sure how to say her name, Otessa Moshfe, or <laughs> I don't I don't know how to say it, but she's a delight, and um, I can't wait to read everything <laughs> that she writes. I've already read some of her shorter works, but um, the writing is really sparse and poetic at the same time, and perfectly wrought. So I think you would love this if you're especially interested in the artistry of literature, especially modern literature, or I should say contemporary literature, since modern is rather specific. So, that's Eileen. Um, and yes, like I said, you would, I think this is the only edition so far, so. Okay. And now we'll get to the last one. Which is, um, very exciting. You may have heard of this one. And it maybe has the most compelling cover art, depending on your tastes. This one is by Shirley Jackson. And it is... We have always lived in the castle. And we can see our main characters. And you'll notice that a cat, <laughs> figuratively and literally, is at the center of this book here. And again, two very interesting female characters. And I want to be, sorry, I'm shifting around a little bit here, okay. I want to be um, clear when I say we were looking for strong female characters for our, our, new, um, our newcomers to book club. And when we talk about strong female characters, we don't necessarily mean righteous female characters um, or heroic female characters. We just mean very well-written, strongly written females, and every single one of these books um, has those. This one has a couple, and um, and then of course it has a lot of, there's sort of an ensemble cast, but they're very much in the background. We have always lived in the castle, is, um, is a book that I think everybody can enjoy. Um, and actually, I'll, I'll get to my little notes on it first, so I don't repeat myself, I guess. Go to my little notes. Okay. Oh yeah, I just wrote a couple. I just said that it's, it's priggish and polite with jet black humor and maudlin mystery. Yeah. Um, so... It feels very um, restrained and uptight in its language, um, very <laughs> upper upper crust, I suppose. And if you've read anything 
by the wonderful Shirley Jackson before, you'll be familiar with this very peculiar tone. Um, the register is a little, um, well, you know, it's sort of condescending because we have people who maybe come from privilege and that privilege shapes and distorts their vision of the world. So if you've read, say, The Sundial, um, or even to some degree The Lottery, which is Shirley Jackson's very famous short story, um, you'll be familiar with this. It's, it's a tone that seems like it's suited to a comedy of manners, and yet her content is quite... Um, is quite odd and dark at times. So I like this cover. I think it spans all the way to the back too, so you can check that out. Okay. And this is sort of a mid in terms of size. It's it's a page turner. Um but it uh it's also not that long. Um but I think it's a little bit longer than than Daisy Miller, so. And you can see all these interesting characters and maybe start to glean a little about what our book is about. Okay, so, um, and Shirley Jackson also wrote The Haunting of Hill House, which is very famous um, and has been adapted into different movies, some more successful than others. So, anyhow. Okay, so those are our books. Um, what I'm going to do now, let me get this out of the way here. What I'll do now is send around our little, um, our little box. <laughs> I'm using a chocolate box from Valentine's. I hope that's okay. I'm gonna send around the box, and you guys can open it and, um, write on, you'll each see you have a slip of paper and a pen. Okay? So, I need you to just choose whichever book sounds most interesting to you and and as I am um, as I pass this around then um, you'll just open it up put your vote inside close it again and pass it around the table okay so I'm gonna go ahead and send um, send this around give you guys just a minute to vote here Okay? And take your time. If when it comes to you, you're not quite ready yet, um, just take your time. <laughs> okay? So, I'll give you guys just a, another minute and then I'll pass around, okay? Okay, I'm going to start passing the box around to you. There you go. And yeah, just everybody go ahead and um, put your, your paper in. No, I won't be voting. <laughs> um, typically, the, the person selecting choices doesn't vote. Yeah. No, it's a great question. Great question. Alright. Yep, just keep passing it around. Mm hmm. Great. Okay. <laughs> now I will go ahead and um, tally the, the uh, votes for you. So let me have. I'm gonna just put this aside. I have a pad, okay? So, let's write down, I'm gonna write down here the, um, 
the entrance that we have. I should have already done this, but we had, oops, just a little hanging chat there. Okay, so, um, the books we had were Eileen, um, Daisy Miller, Okay, um, look at me. Okay, and we have always lived in the castle. Okay, so that's where we'll start. So I'll begin by opening the box. And we'll just put the tally to the side here. Okay. And now we'll open the box. Okay. The first vote. As for we have always lived in the castle. Okay. So we have always lived in the castle is one. Okay, this one's for Eileen. Look at me. And we have always lived in the castle. Daisy Miller. We have always lived in the castle. Clean these up a little. <laughs> We have always lived in the castle.
We have always lived in the castle. We've got two more. This one's for look at me. And the last one. for Daisy Miller. Okay, we'll just make sure that there's no more left. Make sure they didn't fall underneath the little, um, the little hearts inside. Nope. Empty box. I just like these little inserts. I keep them because they smell like chocolate. <laughs> so I'm going to put them back in. I also like the little noise they make. votes. Daisy Miller with two votes. Look at me with two votes as well. And then we have always lived in the castle got five of your votes. So I think we know what the winner is. <laughs> Reading. We have always lived in the castle. Um, I'm really excited. This is the book that I think I would have chosen for us. So um, I'm so excited. And um, I think you'll really, really love it. Um, you can get a couple versions of it when you go to uh, get your copy, which um, you can do this week. And um, I love this version for the art. And it's also really nice and durable but flexible for reading. So, yeah, I highly recommend um, this version. And it has the nice sort of staggered trade pages, which I think is always um, kind of nice. So, um, this one I got at Elliott Bay Books, um, but you can find it anywhere pretty much. Um, as well as online, and this one is the Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition. So, uh, if everybody is in favor of it, we'll go ahead and use this as our standard. Um, so when we're talking about different pages and things, um, it's from this, the Penguin version, okay? So we'll go ahead and use this version, unless anyone has an aversion to that. Does anyone have an issue? No? Okay, great. Okay, so we'll go ahead and go with this one. That's We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. This one has the introduction by Jonathan Lethem, um, which I would wait to read until after we've read the book. Um, that's just my recommendation, okay? Um, so please, before you leave, feel free to stick around for some coffee. Um, and otherwise, we will uh, see you next week right here, okay? All right. Thanks for coming, everyone. Does anyone have a problem with that?
Does anyone apart from the cat have a problem with that? Soda, help yourself to snacks, have a glass of champagne um, and coffee. Okay, at the end.